Hi everybody, it is January 8, 2018. Just to warn you, should you want to just click off, I may curse. I am kind of fired up. I am so sick of Americans who are just not doing a thing as more and more tyranny is being cemented here in our country. It's obvious, it's in our face, and these small victories, this mistrial, the judge in, in the uh, district court in Nevada, Judge Navarro, who had uh, dismissed the criminal case against Nevada rancher Clive and Bundy and three other men, charging uh, or dismissed the charges stemming from the armed 2014 standoff with federal law enforcement officers over cattle grazing rights dispute. She had declared it a mistrial and now has barred federal prosecutors for taking from taking another swipe. Okay, um, what happened in this case? Well, the prosecutors who really now need to be prosecuted, they should lose their license to practice law, but let's see if anything happens to them. But they withhold, they withheld, sorry, evidence. They did not disclose records about surveillance and snipers at the Bundy Ranch, unredacted FBI logs about activity at the ranch in the days around the standoff, threat assessments about the Bundy's dating to 2012, and internal affairs reports about the BLM. Oh, why did they withhold all of that information? Because it would have been favorable to the Bundys. The evidence withheld could have been favorable to the accused. Um, we know our courts now are so unbelievably corrupt. Yeah, I, I, I am shocked at how Americans just don't seem to care about much of anything except their own little lives. And when you have people like the Bundys, when you have people who were involved in the Mallard standoff in Oregon last year, standing on principle, they get so villainized by even those who are quote-unquote awake. 3,000 pages. 3,000 pages were provided to the Bundy's attorney after the start of the trial. That, that is a gross miscarriage of justice it is prohibited. Prosecutors need to turn over all evidence, and they didn't. Will these prosecutors be prosecuted? I don't think they will be. Navarro, the judge, cited multiple willful evidence violations by prosecutors in dropping the case, saying they prevented a fair trial and amounted to prosecutorial misconduct. Attorneys, you know, that this is what happens in the legal system. Attorneys do things that really they should be cited for, sanctioned for, disciplined for, or disbarred for, but that almost never ever happens. Because you get, you know, into these professions and or organizations or institutions. Everybody protects their own. Because, well, that's just the way we roll here. Yeah. Don't hold anybody accountable. Just protect your own. I... I am really, none of this, none of what has taken place in Nevada with the Bundys 
And with the Hammonds, which I'm going to get to in one second, and I'm going to read a lot of this article. And you Trump supporters, how about calling the White House and demanding that Dwight and Steve Hammond have their sentences commuted by Trump? He wants to drain the swamp, right? These two men, ranchers, sitting in jail as domestic terrorists. You're just going to sit back and let Trump fix everything? Or are you going to be involved? Demanding that Trump free these innocent ranchers from prison. I'll get into that in one moment. But here, NPR, judge dismisses federal case against Clyden Bundy and Sons, bars retrial. Good. Good. Now, Navarro. I don't know what to say about this woman. Uh, here's a petition, and I'm not sure when this petition was uh, posted on change.org. How long ago? Is there a date? Can I find a date? A month ago. Um, well, did she finally break because public pressure got too much? Public pressure actually does work. <clears throat> so here is this petition. They got 10,770 signing it. They needed 5,000. Impeach Judge Gloria M. Navarro. Well, she finally did what they wanted her to do. But when you look at these charges, protesting against federal government overreach, that's what the Cliven, that's what the Bundys were doing. That's what the protest at the Maller Refuge last year was all about. Now, we all know also that Oh, Harry Reid, his son, a communist Chinese energy firm that want the Bundy's land all involved in this. You don't ever see mainstream media doing the work that they need to do today to inform the public. They leave out the Harry Reid stuff. They leave out this uh, energy firm. They leave out how the BLM and other agencies are stealing land from Americans out West, but local state governments are stealing it all over from Americans. Listen, Russell Means, Russell Means, Native American, he's dead now. What did he say? A country that is founded on deceit will die by deceit. And guess what? We're dying. Greed, corruption, lying has become so malignant now. We are dying. Because we could not figure out a way to turn the direction away from greed and corruption. And that would have entailed primarily holding people accountable. But very few Americans know how to do that. Very few Americans don't even care. Very few Americans just de holding somebody accountable. Oh my God, I'm going to be confrontational then. Then people are going to judge me. I can't do that. We had here last year the Winbushes, the family that live about a half a mile away from me. Our local government, the city of Anderson, South Carolina, stealing their land, lying to the Winbushes. Eminent domain, we have the right to take more of your land, claiming that they were, it, it was mandated by the EPA to update their sewage plant 
and the sewer lines, but it was all lies because they laid down new sewage pipes for future development, and that is not what eminent domain is to be used for. But how many people showed up for the Wimbushes? Very few. And do I think that anything is ever going to change with our Americans, our fellow Americans? No, I don't. Because the comfortable just don't change. Hey, I got my life. I still have my home. I still have my property. I still have my job. I still can pay my bills. I don't need to change. I'm fine. And I can look at Americans who really do stand on principle as domestic terrorists. Protesting against federal government overreach. The fact it sold 9,000 acres of public land bordering Bundy Ranch and other people who own grazing rights to the division to a communist Chinese energy firm represented by Rory Reed, Harry Reed's son, for 4.5 million, 34.1 uh, million less than its value, and began rounding up the Bundy's cattle and holding them in inhumane conditions, at least 60 purportedly suffering death or missing, and in order to suppress C4CF's education of the people, I'm not sure what C4CF is, so the Bundys were charged with conspiracy to commit an offense against the United States. Conspiracy to impede and injure a federal officer. Assault on a federal officer. Threatening a federal law enforcement officer. Use and carry of a firearm in relation to a crime of violence. They committed no violence. It was the BLM that showed up with their snipers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then do some research on what was taking place in 2014. Obstruction of uh, the due administration of justice. Interference with interstate commerce by extortion. Interstate travel in aid of extortion. Aiding and abetting among the political prisoners are Cliven, Ammon, Ryan, and Mel Bundy, Pete Santilli, Ryan Payne, Blaine Cooper, Eric Parker, Jerry DeLumis. Okay, so the judge did what was necessary. Maybe it became too obvious that she had to declare a mistrial. Maybe the public pressure led her to take this action, or maybe she had a sense of, of, of justice. Maybe she has a conscience. I don't know. But this is very good for the, uh, for the Bundys. Americans really need to take a realistic view of what has taken place in our country. You liberal progressives who hear this word militia and you get all, oh my God, militia. These are people who are actually fighting for your right. These are people who fight for your constitutional rights. It's not the soldiers who were sent overseas, okay? They're not fighting for your freedom. They're not fighting for your individual rights. They're fighting for the elite who unleash them in other countries so that we can steal property wherever we want to steal it. Just like what our federal government did to the indigenous hundreds of years ago. Hey, sign this treaty. We'll betray it. We don't care. Stealing their land? Russell Means said it. We're all living on a reservation now with our federal government, with our local governments, with our state governments, stealing Americans' lands. And they're getting away with it because, well, the betrayal of their fellow Americans who 
who do nothing. These are the people who fight for your constitutional rights. Not the soldiers that you say, thank you for your service. NPR. These pictures, right? Americans who have no interest in finding out the truth of what is taking place. They look at these pictures and go, oh my God, they're part of a militia. They're anti-government. This is so sick, what this country has turned into. It's so profoundly twisted. Clive and Bundy has refused to recognize the government's control over U.S. public land since the 1990s, racking up roughly one million in unpaid grazing lease fees and fines. In April 2014, federal agents demanded Bundy remove his cattle from those public lands, only to be met with a group of Bundy's armed followers, including his sons, Ammon and Ryan, and a man named Brian Payne. Really? NPR? This is your, your journalistic integrity right there? Smacking us in the face? None of it true. Many current and retired federal land managers worry the failure to prosecute Bundy could jeopardize the safety of federal field workers in the West. That's right. That's right. Our failure to prosecute? Why'd you lose the case? You lost the case because you withhold evidence? You lost the case because you were caught in your lies? You lost the case because you were manipulating the truth and lying outright. And now you let people who were innocent finally free you're afraid that these people are going to take out their guns on the field workers? And NPR actually posts this crap. NPR, liberal progressives, oh, they love it, they love it, they love it. NPR, they tell the truth. They don't. And it's like, you know, the, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Bundy Sons lead anti-government extremist militias and takeover of federal wildlife headquarters in Oregon. You know, they, they say this kind of stuff because the liberal progressives, they love the Southern Poverty Law Center. They have so much respect for the Southern Poverty Law Center, not understanding that this is an arm of the elitists who want to take over this country. They don't understand this language defying the U.S. government. How could you defy the U.S. government? Oh, my God. They're extremists. They're anti-government activists. They're crazy people. They're violent. They're militia. Not understanding these are the people who are actually standing up for all of us, protecting our freedom, protecting our constitutional rights, not the soldiers overseas. President Richard Cohen testified today about the threat of radical right terrorism before the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Oversight Agency Action, Federal Rights and Federal Courts. Our country faces threats of violent extremism from many sources. So there are an awful lot, and I do think that those Republicans, they know the Southern Law Poverty Center is just crap. Um, and, and yeah, pub, publishing lies. I mean, hell, they have a hate watch. Hate watch. 
It's a blog that monitors and exposes the activities of the American radical right. Militia commander. These are people that we have to monitor. These are crazy people. How dare they fight for their own individual rights, for their own land that was, it's very obvious the BLM is stealing their land. All one has to do is do just a little bit of research and they could find that out. But they don't. They believe the Southern Poverty Law Center. They believe NPR. And because, you know, in this country, well, how they live out West, it's a whole other culture from how, you know, the liberal progressives live in New York and New England. Whole different culture. So they even would look at the picture like this and think, oh my God, these people. Look at that man. Look at his stance. Oh my God. And he's wearing fatigues. All of these people are wearing fatigues. They're crazy. I know the psyche. A hate watch headline. The headlines for January 8th. I mean, you, you read the articles that they have, that the, the hate, the hate watch. Here, Salon, alleged white supremacist accused in Amtrak incident, wanted to kill all black people. Really? In Kansas? Newly unsealed court papers reveal that a man who menaced passengers on an Amtrak train in October may have also been a white supremacist. Taylor Michael Wilson, 26. Yes, he had mental health issues and he was a drug user. So, did the FBI recruit him? Is he yet another patsy? So that the Southern Poverty Law Center, well, they can put it on their hate watch. Yes, we've got white supremacists, KKK, Nazis, all oh, coming out of the closet once Trump got in office. Trump unleashed this sickening. He pulled the emergency brake on an Amtrak train in Nebraska. The stop was sudden. After Wilson allegedly stormed into a secure area, witnesses said he screamed, I'm the conductor, bitch. What are you going to do, shoot me? To who? Who did he say that to? Uh, we don't know. But he had a loaded 38 caliber handgun in his waistband. He had a knife, a hammer, a respiratory mask, and a variety of ammunition. Why would he have a variety of ammunition if he only had a 38 caliber handgun? Who knows? I mean, this is mainstream media news. But he apparently wanted to kill all black people. He wants to kill black people. So I guess he pulling the emergency brake on an Amtrak train in Kansas. In Kansas? How many black people are in Kansas? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can't stand the idiocy. I cannot stand the lies. I cannot stand the apathy. The lack of care. I can't stand, especially the liberal progressives who believe that they are part of the educated elite. They never do the research to find out the truth. They just love the lies. Their arrogance prevents them, prevents them from doing any research because they never have to question themselves. They are right. They are right. The Southern Poverty Law Center, they are right. NPR, they're right. Don't challenge. Don't challenge my beliefs. Don't ask me to step over the line from lie to truth. Don't ask me to do that. You disrupt my comfort. Trump supporters, 
Why don't you call the White House? Demand that Trump commute the sentence of Dwight and Steve Hammond. Yeah, in jail for being a rancher. Dwight and Steve. Dwight, 78 years old. Steve, 50 years old. Still in jail as domestic terrorists. That's our government today. Department of Interior, namely the Bureau of Land Management and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, have deployed their administrative powers to punitively regulate and maliciously prosecute the Hammond family of Oregon in a thinly veiled attempt to drive them off their ranch, their historic grazing allotments, and vested water rights. And when you really understand the truth of what is going on with the BLM doing to ranchers out west, what they did to the indigenous people, then you get a whole new perspective of what's going on. Our federal government, the BLM, through any means possible, stealing the lands, stealing land. When you read this, if you don't see the gross miscarriage of justice here with the Hammonds, then you are so far gone that you... You should be, you, you should really just voluntarily lock yourself up because you're a danger to the human race. 1994, the BLM, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, falsely arrested Dwight Hammond for protecting their legally owned water rights. And uh, they prevailed in court, and the Hammonds didn't countersue the BLM or the, the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service for damages and false arrest. So 20 years the Hammonds fought to be able to trail cattle um, on historic stock driveways. They had the rights, they got the documents, um, and what did our government do? Government records document repeated efforts by the agencies to prevent the Hammonds from using their historic right the Hammonds were arbitrarily stripped of three BLM grazing permits and one Maller National Wildlife Refuge grazing permit, gutting the economic viability of their ranching operation. The grazing permits were attached to the Hammonds' statutorily protected vested stock water rights and grazing preferences. Doesn't matter. We're going to strip them because we're government. And you can't question us. And if you do, then you're an extremist domestic terrorist you are anti-government, and we're going to throw you in jail. It may take years, but we're going to do it. 2001, with BLM permission, Steve Hammond started a prescribed burn on their private land that accidentally spilled onto 137 acres of adjoining federal land. The BLM never cited the Hammonds for that fire. In 2006, during a violent thunderstorm, lightning struck federal land near the Hammonds' home, barns, stackyards of winter feed. The Hammonds started an emergency backfire on their private land to protect their home and buildings, but it burned one acre of adjoining federal land before it could be contained. The backfire not only saved the Hammonds' home and barns, uh, but it potentially protected thousands of acres of federal land because it was a wind-driven wildfire. Okay, the BLM pursued criminal charges against Dwight and Steve. What, well, why? In 2001, the BLM didn't even cite the Hammonds for the fire that had spilled into 137 acres, but in 2006, they pursued criminal charges for one acre. The district attorney dismissed the case, dismissed all charges against the Hammonds. In 2010, before the statute of limitations ran out on the 2001 fire, wow, long statute of limitations on fires out west, nine years, the BLM brought the Hammonds into federal court, indicting them on nine charges related to both fires. Why? Why did it take them so long? Why did they not cite the Hammonds in 2001? What's going on here? Oh, maybe there was ulterior motives of the BLM. Hmm, let's see if that's true. 
So rather than charging Dwight and Steve under the BLM's own land use statutes, prosecutors instead maliciously charged them as domestic terrorists under the Anti-Terrorism Act of 1996. Really? Domestic terrorists? For ranching? Ranchers are domestic terrorists today. So, there was a conviction against Dwight Hammond, now 78, Steve Hammond, now 50. But, oh, the government, the government was willing to drop all charges if the Hammonds would simply sign over two-thirds of their ranch. Wow. Clear and obvious. Federal District Court Judge Michael Hogan, during sentencing, said, I will impose a sentence that I believe is defensible under the law, but also one that is defensible, de defensible to my conscience. It would be cruel and unusual punishment for this crime to give them the mandatory minimum of five years. So Stephen was sentenced to one year, Dwight 90 days, which they served, and they served it uh, with, you know, staggering it because the judge allowed the men to continue, continue to operate their ranch. What were they charged for? They were charged because the BLM wanted their land. They weren't charged for the fire. Because if that were the case, you know, these arson things, very serious, they would have charged them in 2001 for the 137 acres that the fire had accidentally spilled into the federal land. Now they're getting them on one acre. So the Hammonds didn't go for this, I'm not signing over two-thirds of my ranch to have these charges dropped. And counsel for the Hammonds failed to raise critical defenses and pleadings. So you got to be very careful about the attorneys that you get today because they may have already been co-opted by the other side and you end up getting screwed by your own attorney. You've got to be very careful who represents you today. But their attorney pressured the Hammonds. The Hammonds attorney pressured them to take a midnight plea deal to a partial verdict. The Hammonds understood the plea to mean that the case was over once and for all. They did not realize that in signing the agreement they had waived all their rights to appeal but the federal government had retained their right to appeal. Oh, an attorney needs to make that very, very clear. Clearly, the Hammond's attorney did not. So, what happened? Once the ink was dry on the plea agreement, the government prepared an appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. In a separate but related civil case, the Hammonds were fined $400,000 they signed that agreement under duress, giving the BLM the first right of refusal should the Hammonds be forced to sell their ranch. 2015, the Department of Justice, uh, the Department of Interior, appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and the court ordered the Hammonds to be resentenced for the full five-year term, beginning January 4, 2016, and they were incarcerated in federal prison in Southern California. Do you not see that it's all about stealing the land? That it's all about destroying the ranchers? Because our federal government wants the land. They want to sell it to the Chinese. People like Harry Reid want millions and millions of dollars. So Harry Reid even called the Hammonds domestic terrorists. For the rule of law to mean anything in this country, it must be applied equally to everyone, not selectively, to private citizens for ulterior motives, ulterior motives. Federal employees receive immunity for the same act for which the Hammonds were charged criminally. 
and sent to prison in a manner even the trial judge found to be egregious. Even more troubling is the long history in the Hammond case and others of federal administrative and prosecutorial powers being weaponized in what appears to be a concerted effort by the BLM, aided by the Department of Justice, to take property without compensation and extort exorbitant fines for law-abiding ranchers. While government abuse of power is not uncommon, it is uncommon for a 78-year-old man and his son, both of whom have exemplary records, to be sent to prison as domestic terrorists for an accidental fire. So Trump supporters demand that Trump commute their sentences. Demand it. Demand it. Law is often but the tyrant's will and always so when it violates the rights of an individual. If Americans don't stand up to this their own rights will be stripped away from them. They have been already. They just don't seem to care. Well, the reality is they manifest a reality that we all have to live. And that should piss off an awful lot of you. But there's no way that any of this will change even with the Bundys released from jail. It's a small victory. Don't sit back thinking these small victories are going to be turning the tide of tyranny in this country. No. You are the only one who can turn it. 